here at the CCA Workbench, Dave. Yes, and we are. And wow, yeah, it's all I can say. Yeah, Man, got, we got a lot some of snook well, stuff to talk yeah, about. Snook stuff. I've been in a snook slump, but uh, we can still talk about them. Okay. I, I don't want to share too much. Anyway, um, the largest <laughs> the largest snook that's ever been caught in Florida was 44 pounds, and it was caught in Fort Myers, uh, I think in '84 or something like that, and it was caught on a on a on a jig, flare on a flare hawk jig. Yes. Um, Snook are one of our most popular game fish in Florida. They were made a game fish. Uh, you can't sell them commercially. Um, it's, it's, they, they jump and they, they get big and they love to eat stuff and they're powerful fighters and that's why we love to catch them. Right. Um, uh, they change from male to female. All the big fish that you catch, they've all become females. They start out as males and as they grow older, they turn into females. The, the biggest female in the Atlantic has been, they, was 18 years old. So they think they can get to 20 years old at least on their own. And the biggest male they've ever caught in the Atlantic was yeah. about 15 pounds. I wish I could do that. What's that change? I wish well, I could have been a male until <laughs> I was 20 and then I became a female. I'd, be, I'd have all the smarts from you, one way. You, I better just No, you, Yeah, exactly. You'd yeah. be worse off is what you'd be for sure. Anyway. Uh, snooker ambush features. <laughs> you know they love to they love to you know hide in around rocks or inlets or uh, walls, sea walls, a reef, and they they'll hide in there and they'll reach out and, and, and get stuff as it passes by. So anything that looks like a they love to eat fish, any small looking fish or uh, or shrimp or crabs, uh, they love to eat those as well. But they eat whatever is the most of is around, kind of like a blue marlin. You know, they say, what does a blue marlin eat? Well, if there's a bunch of pilchards around, he's eating those. Same way with a, with a snook. If there's a bunch of little mullet around, he's eating mullet. If there's a bunch of shrimp around, he's eating shrimp. So if you're, you know, you see a bunch of mullet popping shrimp and you go through a top water plug that looks like a fish, more than likely you're not gonna get a bite out of a snook. You gotta try to match what they're eating. So that's what we spend a lot of time doing. Now. You say that, and then you look at this thing. Now, we're trying to match a hatch of something, and I don't know what this looks like it's swimming in the ocean. Now, they say that this, this runner here is supposed to look like the tail of a, of a bait fish as it's running through there. And these, these flare hawk jigs, people use them all the time. They're really great at night under bridges. This is for the woodstock. Yeah, is that what that's Snooks. for? Yeah, the ones that were born during woodstock. Oh, know? yeah, why is that? Well, you know. All the crazy colors. You know? Oh, okay. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. In I got you. Well, these things these things run from like one ounces to three ounces, and you know when you got a whole lot of current coming through, you want to start using the bigger bigger jigs. And actually, when you got a lot of current and you're using those big jigs, that's when you really catch the great big snook. So that's that's what you want to try to do is when you're using these things. And when you're they say when you're using fishing these in dirty water. You want to try to use chartreuse and stuff like uh, that. Yeah, I agree. You know, I and then when you get real clean water, you want to move to like a white color. You know, just yeah. a, a, a white or something, something white and blue. And and if you're not getting bites with with the white and the blue, put the chartreuse on there. And if you're not getting a bite on the yellow heads, right. try an orange head. You know, the, the, some guys will go through you know a long time. You know, different. They'll bring 15, 20 jigs and they'll keep changing them out until they find one that starts to work. And then they start popping them with that and they keep using it. Mm -hmm. but, all right. Or now, maybe you should throw something that looks instead of a jig. Maybe we should throw something that looks like exactly. what they might be eating. Uh, snook like to eat topwater plugs, and if you're and if you're in a place where they're eating a lot of finger mullets, like everybody, every one of these fellows is talking about. Hey, when these things, when the mullets coming through, that's when we start catching them good. If you're using something that looks like a mullet, pilchard, a, a pilchard, a any, any little fish looking thing, that's what they're after. If they're feeding aggressively, and, and I tell you what. Probably your best bet of all is to catch a grunt, a little grunt, and use it on the bottom during July, August, September in the inlets because that's when the all you know, the the reason that we close the snooks off during the summertime is because they congregate in those inlets to spawn. Right. And if we're in there, you know, jacking because they get a ton of them in there, and you can just sit there and jack them and jack them and jack them. And then and the sharks move in and jack them, and yeah. then the porpoise moves in and jacks them, and Ex guess what, our snook numbers. Exactly, so we, we try to keep them you know, safe when they're all piled together in those inlets during the summertime. And once the summer ends and they start to move around off the beach, then we open up the seasons again. And you know. All right, so let's take one second. I'm gonna play your mind here. Oh boy. All right, so you know, what size leader do we need to have, and what size rod should we have as a generic well, most bass train of thought. Well, most bass stuff will work unless you're catching great big snook, you know, under a bridge. You know, if you're fishing in a place where you know you're going to get 20, 30 pound snook, 
you know, a lot of guys will use a, a Penn Senator with 110 mono on it and locked up, you know. He, right. he drops a, a live bait to the bottom and he's hooked up to a 40 pound fish and it's 10 feet away, you yeah. know, so he's got to have all the wood. But if you're, if you're in a, on a flats, you know, you're catching this a, snook. This Akuma, medi uh, this is the heavy action. Yeah. I loaded it with 40 that, be, pounds. That would be fine for 832. That would be fine for an inlet. You could fish yeah. with an inlet with that, and with 50 pound, you know, and mono the other thing, it's going to throw leader. one of those big jigs or one of these big lures you too. It's still not going to be overpowering. Yeah, I get a lot of grief. I fish in Sebastian Inlet a lot, and I fish with a friend of mine who uses a bunch of big, big stuff, and I use a lot of little stuff, and. He, he rides me like a pony because he thinks I'm not going to catch any. I well, haven't yet. But. Well, Dave, you, you know, <laughs> you got to use what God gave you. So I, you're yeah. using little stuff. It I, is what it is. I right? understand. All I understand. right, uh, Bree, you want to go with this now? On that note, sure. Let me just take it from you guys. The Glasgow's is my personal bad, favorite. Bad, bad, bad man. <laughs> oh, my gosh.